Hi everybody, I thought I'd do you uh, a quick video on taking the iron apart so you can see um, what it's like inside and the process of taking it apart. Now my last video was trying to fix that switch and I'm not sure whether where those wires were broken, something shorted out inside the switch so I've got a good iron, I'm going to take the switch out of that and put it in the other one so then I can... I'm, I'll know then if that switch is any good or not. I can order a new one because I said you most of these problems are the switch. They either break and they won't stop steaming, or they won't steam at all. And when you take them apart, I don't know if you can hear that clicking on there. Hold on. You can hear when the um, the switch is broken. Anyway, I've already disassembled part of the iron, so you can. See, I'll turn this side on. Right, so there was um, two screws in the back of the iron, which are those triangular screws, which you can get to with a small electric screwdriver. Undo them, and the back plate comes away. I've already taken the switch out, but basically, if you can see, let me point to it. This this little catch on here, it just you just put it in and free it off and the handle comes away. Let me turn this side on. Yeah, you just see those little white I'm put my glass on. See those little white clips in there? You just stick your screwdriver in and just ease it up both sides and the top comes away. And then you're left with three Phillips screws, one in the front, two in the back corners. So you undo those and the top comes away. Now this is your heater plate. So you've got three, another three Phillips screws, front, two in the back. And that releases, this, this holds the steam. This is your actual ironing plate. And it, as it comes away, this is just the sort of heat cover plate. Now if you can see in there, this is what builds up inside your iron. Now you watch when I pull this away. It's no wonder these irons eventually give up because that's probably six months of normal domestic ironing. And it's just the, the, the dust. Now, when, when you use these irons in your house, everywhere in the room is covered with dust if you're constantly pressing the steam button let me just get rid of that over there so when you're replacing that switch go to the back of the iron you've got you have two wires which go into the back of here now you when you take the back of your iron off take a photo of that so you know which way the wire the wires go in now this brown wire, there isn't any soldering to do in changing the switch, because I said there was, but there isn't. That brown wire goes through the heater plate, down, and connects onto, I presume this is like the steam activator switch here. So to, to change that switch out, I've got one here, this is, this is a broken one. As you can hear, there's no clicking going on there at all. Now on the side of there, it gives you the part number. DMB-16 D6. Now these aren't my glasses. <laughs> um, these are my girlfriend's glasses, I can't find mine. Anyway, so you can go on you can go on eBay. I would put my head down here. You can go on eBay and order these switches um, they come with a slightly different switch cap on there if you can hear the difference the little pressure switch is broken inside so this is a good switch I'm just going to take out of here and put in the other eye this is just a quick video to show the disassembly now when you put that back together screw that back on clean all that muck out of there, drop that on. Now this little bit here, 
which is where the steam comes through. And this is why there's so much steam in here, really, because eventually, I don't know if you can see that there, I think this is probably glued onto there. Now, this iron I haven't taken apart before. Obviously, with all the heat and whatever, that glue goes on there, so you get a lot of steam dissipating through the bottom of here. But um, as long as you put the plate back together tight, it's going to be exactly the same as it was before. So you just pop that back on, realign that. Um, put your three screws back in there, put the top back on, three screws back in there. Now when you put your switch back in the top there, as I said before, to make sure that little spring aligns with the, the switch. But you must make sure you, you lay the cables in properly from the switch so they tuck right down the back so there's no chafing and the, um, these white cables aren't getting pinched anywhere. But that's just a, a dis... put my face back up again. That's just a disassembly um, video for you. If you think I'm looking over there, I'm looking right at the middle of the camera. But the camera's up in the top corner over there and it makes me look like I'm looking in the wrong place. Anyway, that, if you think I'm staring off at the sky. But that's your disassembly video. Just be careful, as I said before, about that, your heat temperature switch. Because on the back of there, if you pop that out, there's a, a little thing in there. You can lose that little white pin. It pings off. Like everything, they disappear into the void. Anyway. It's just a quick uh, disassembly of your iron on your Morphe E. Richards Steam Elite. Because um, I have quite a few hits on the uh, on the video about this, the steam function that keeps bunging up. Because all I seem to be able to find on YouTube is reviews where people have got these irons in and they're doing a, a quick review on them. There must be 50 of them on there. Um, now, just going back to that steam function video... The, the guy from America that's on YouTube is explaining how to descale the, the cylinder inside. Now, all the irons that we've had have had no bolt underneath. If I just tip this one over to show you what I'm talking about. Right, if you see on the bottom of that iron, in the centre there, in the video about more features, he says you take that off and at the bottom of there, there's a little bolt you undo and you can flush the steam tank out. Now, we've got four of these irons that we've had over the last couple of years. None of them have got that bolt you take out of there. But my neighbour bought one of these irons and they've got that little bung underneath. And uh, he's had a problem with his partial steam in past water coming out when he, when they press the steam button so he thought oh, I'll take that he looked at the video and thought I'll take that out of there when he tried to get that bolt out it comes with a little tool it bent the tool it's so tight in there he can't, he can't get it out anyway so he'll have to take the whole thing apart but his iron is still under warranty now he's phoned them and um, he uses RO water so we the first one of these irons we had we live in the south of England the first one of these irons we had got totally bunged up with lime scale. Now I've got an RO unit, this is water, um, I use for my fish tank. And um, so we use that water in the iron. So we get, we still get a little bit of lime scale because the water down is so hard. But we've cured the problem 85% as I would say. But now he's had this problem with water dribbling out of his iron and he phoned the customer services and they said, are you using RO water? And he said, yes. And the woman said, well, you need to mix that RO water 50-50 with tap water. Why would you put dirty water in with clean water? Well, I've got no idea. They reckon that's how it's set up. But my opinion is, as soon as you put dirty water in with clean water, you're just going to cause the system to scale up even more. But they reckon that's how it works. And he had to reset the thermostat by setting it high, letting it cool down, setting it low, letting it cool down, setting it high. He had to do this 10 times to reset the thermostat. How that resets the thermostat, I've no idea. Well, I'm just Joe Bloggs, who just tries to fix his irons for his missus, so he doesn't have to spend 150 quid on a new iron. 
I don't know. But my, I, I can't see why you would put dirty water, not dirty water, but tap water, in with perfectly clean RO water. But that's just, just another subject we could look at one day. Anyway, that's just a disassembly video. I'll um, list that. I'll watch it back. I'll probably have to do it again because it's probably a load of rubbish. But click like. I'm doing loads of other videos and loads of other random rubbish. See you later. Bye.